All right, greetings, family. What we're doing right now is we're going to do message to the people. Uh, I'm just going to try to read the whole thing because I, I, I stress to us as a people that we should be reading the great works of our past as well as the great works of our present. And, you know, if, if we could manage, write the great works of our future. Um, this is one of the great works of our past. If I were to name the top three books, you know, available to you that you should definitely, definitely read, it would be Patahotep, Message to the People, and of course, The Book of Power. Uh, but here's message to the people. Um, I have it available as an ebook. You know, as you can see, I'm reading it on my computer in a PDF file. So if you want the PDF file, just you know, click on the Discord, join the Discord, and uh, you know, just just request it. Just say, hey, I want this book, um, and and you got it. But I mean, otherwise, you know, it's pretty easy to find this this particular PDF. So it's not out of the way. Here's what I want you to do, though. I want I want to read this, I want to read this chapter to you, this lesson to you, and uh, and you know we'll take it from there. So let's go. Lesson one: intelligence, education, universal knowledge, and how to get it. You know, and of course it's not going to be a straightforward reading. I'm going to you know do some comments as well, but mostly you know you're going to enjoy this. Don't worry. All right. So you must never stop learning. The world's greatest men and women were people who educated themselves outside of the university with all the knowledge that the university gives. And you have the opportunity of doing the same thing the university student does, read and study. One must never stop reading. Read everything that you can read that is of standard knowledge. Don't waste your time reading trashy literature. This is to say, don't pay any attention to the ten cent novels, Wild West stories, and cheap sentimental books. But where there is a good plot and a good story in the form of a novel, read it. It is necessary to read it for the purpose of getting information on human nature. The idea is that personal experience is not enough for a human to get all the useful knowledge of life because the individual life is too short. So we must feed on the experience of others. The literature we read should include the biography and autobiography of men and women who have accomplished greatness in their particular line. So right there, that's very important. You know, the autobiographies and biographies. A good biography and autobiography book would be uh, J.A. Rogers, People of Color. So just take that, take note of that. J.A. Rogers writes a really substantial uh I think it's great men of color and and it's it's a phenomenal work in that regard. So whenever you can buy these books and own them and whilst you are reading them, make pencil and pen notes of the striking sentences and paragraphs that you would like to remember so that when you have to refer to the book for any thought that you would like to refresh your mind on, you will not have to read over the whole book. This is a very critical I don't really do this, but it's very critical that you do. I, I sometimes pick up a book and I say to myself, like, I want to find this particular passage, and I just can't. But I, I'm not interested in reading the whole book. So definitely make notes. I try not to make notes, obviously, because I want to pass my books on to other people. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of use the post-its, but the post-its don't work as well. Like, just use the pencil. You know, use the pencil. All right. I mean, I fold the pages, too. Uh, like, I fold the page, but it's not, it's not as good. Uh, although that, that, that could work. All right, you should also read the best poetry for inspiration. The standard poets have always been the most inspirational creators. From a good line of poetry, you may get the inspiration for the career of a lifetime. Many a great man and woman was first inspired by some attractive line or verse of poetry. When it comes to poetry, you already know the Pro-Black Compendium has, like, the best. Um, let me see, is anybody in? Uh, let me say peace, family. Just type into the... Just type into the. Uh, wow. All right. Um, let's get back to this. Let's see. There are good poets and bad poets, just like there are good novels and bad novels. Always select the best poets for your inspirational urge. Speaking of which, the best poet. And I'm just gonna. I'm gonna keep going over this. The best poet. One of the best poets. When, when you read J. A. Rogers' uh, autobiography, you know, autobiographical. Oh, sorry, biographical book. Um, 
you're going to find that he t he mentions uh, he says one of the first master poets of our race was Paul Lawrence Dunbar. All of Paul Lawrence Dunbar's works can be read uh, on like online, like you know Gutenberg and all that stuff. So so if you're looking for the best poetry, right, you know you can find it pretty easily with with regard Paul Lawrence Dunbar. But also, like I said, I have uh, you know great poetry in the pro-black compendium so it's just just everything's just coming together okay read history incessantly until you master it this means your own national history the history of the world social history industrial history and the history of the different sciences but primarily the history of man if you do not know what went on before you came here and what is happening at the time you live but away from you you will not know the world and will be ignorant of the world and mankind you know, it looks like I'm gonna have to, you know, comment a lot, but read history. When it comes to history, like I said, the three best history books would be uh, Chancer Williams' Destruction of Black Civilization. You would have um, oh, Robin Walker's uh, When We Ruled, and you would have, let's see, uh, my sister, you know, A Wonderful Ethiopians of the Ancient Kushite Empire, and that's by. Uh, Drusilla Dungey Houston, right? And of course, you know, like I said, I put this, I put this in the other book too, in the in the in the Pro-Black Compendium. In the back, you'll see, you know, recommended books and all that, and and you'll see, you'll see those. So so definitely, you know, like I'm I'm telling you, like like Garvey is saying, read. I'm telling you, read, and I'm making it easier for you to read. You know. But all right, let's say you can only make the best out of life by knowing and understanding it. To know, you must fall back on the intelligence of others who came before you and have left their records behind. To be able to read intelligently, you must first be able to master the language of your country. To do this, you must be well acquainted with its grammar and the science of it. Every six months, you should read over again the science of the language that you speak so as not to forget its rules. People judge you by your writing and your speech. If you write badly and incorrectly, they become prejudiced towards your intelligence. And if you speak badly and incorrectly, those who hear you become disgusted and will not pay much attention to you, but in their hearts laugh after you. A leader who is to teach men and present any fact of truth to man must first be learned in his subject. So first first be learned in whatever you're talking about. Never write or speak on a subject you know nothing about, for there is always somebody who knows the particular subject to laugh at you or to ask you embarrassing questions that may make others laugh at you. You can know about any subject under the sun by reading about it. If you cannot buy the books outright and own them, go to your public circulating library in your district or town so as to get the use of those books. You should do that as you may refer to them for information. You should read at least four hours a day. The best time to read is in the evening after you have retired from your work and after you have rested and before sleeping hours. But do so before but do so before morning so that during your sleeping hours what you have read may become subconscious, that is to say planted in your memory. Never go to bed without doing some reading. So look at that. Never go to bed without doing some reading. That's uh that's amazing. I'm I'm I'll admit though that my, my 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 magnus opus my my big book uh uh the book of power you probably can't read that you know in bed <laughs> it's just too heavy but uh but otherwise uh you know i i have smaller books you know i have smaller like quote books and you know you probably see that if you if you're paying attention right but uh but this is this is i mean you can still read it you can still read it if you if you just don't lay down with it uh never keep the company right, here's here's really important right here Never keep the constant company of anybody who doesn't know as much as you or is as educated as you and from whom you cannot learn something or reciprocate your learning, especially if that person is illiterate or ignorant because constant association with such a person will co unconsciously cause you to drift into the peculiar culture or ignorance of that person. This is, this is, ugh, like this is power. This is like, this is why I'm telling you this is one of the top three books you can read, you know? Because this is perfect life advice. I, I can give you an example. I was, all right, let's say, uh, let's, not, let's not use me, right? <laughs> but let's just say that if you associate with, uh, you know, individuals who are not necessarily, like, all right, all right, how about this? One time I was visiting somebody, right? And they had a, a, a brother-in-law. And... Uh, the brother-in-law is just sitting down watching car videos, right? And the thing is this, that there's nothing wrong with watching car videos, but obviously, like, that's not the ambiance. You, you, you understand? That's not the ambiance for, for, for constant growth. And, and, and this is something that a lot of us 
don't understand. Like a lot of people, like for instance, there are people, like like the associates that I have, right, tend to be those that I can learn from. You get what I'm saying? Uh, you can say, hey, that's a little selfish. Y- y- no, it's 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 called reciprocation. You know, it's reciprocation. It's not just like I don't just teach. I learn too. You know, and that's what you have to do inside of your association. Now, sometimes I, I don't associate with people that I-, I can learn from, and and that you know that that of course that always you know ends in trouble. Like it's it's almost like a guarantee it's going to end in trouble. All right, so let's go on. Always try to associate with people from whom you can learn something. Contact with cultured persons and with books is the best companionship you can have and keep. By reading good books, you keep the company of the authors of the books or the subjects of the books when otherwise you could not meet them in the social contact of life. Never. All right. So this is something actually really important. By reading good books, you keep the company of the authors of the books or the subjects of the books when otherwise you cannot meet them in the social contact of life. And this is the, this is probably what's the peculiar thing. You could actually contact me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you could you could come on my Discord uh and, and you'll have like one of the best authors in the world like at your fingertip. Uh and I mean maybe that's one of the reasons why you're like I don't need to read this book cuz I could just, you know. But like the reality is that yeah, I'm here uh and 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 but you know, I'm not here forever, obviously. Uh I'm not here forever, but but I'm here uh right now. So so definitely do that. Oh, hold on a second. All right, never go down in intelligence to those who are below you, but if possible, help to lift them up to you and always try to ascend to those who are above you and be their equal with the hope of being their master. You know, so, you know, been there, done that, huh? (laughs) All right, I mean, you know, y'all can catch up to me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anyway, all right. Continue always in the application of the things you desire educationally, culturally, or otherwise, and never give up until you reach the objective. And you can reach the objective if others have done so before you, proving by their doing it that it is possible. If you desire to accomplish greatness, you must first decide in your own mind in what direction you desire to seek that greatness. And when you have so decided in your own mind, work unceasingly toward it. The particular thing that you may want should be before you at all all the time. And what whatsoever it takes to get it or make it possible should be undertaken. Use your faculties and persuasion to achieve all you set your mind on. One second. All right. Try never to repeat yourself in any one discourse and saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Except you are making new points. And see, you know, this is something that you know, a lot of people don't understand. Unless you're making new points, don't repeat yourself. Uh, because repetition is tiresome and it annoys those who hear the repetition. Therefore, try to possess as much universal knowledge as possible through reading so to be able to be free of repetition and trying to drive home a point. No one is ever too old to learn. Therefore, you should take a- advantage of every educational facility. If you should hear of a great man or woman who is to lecture or speak in your town on any given subject, or, <clears throat> or go on YouTube, <clears throat> and the person is an authority on the subject, always make time to go and hear him. That means next time I go live, I don't want to be by myself. Let me see. Am I by myself right now? Uh, yup. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be by myself, you know. So uh, next time I'm live, you know, come through. But let's keep going. Um, like, hey, you know, being by yourself is actually... Uh, it's actually a wonderful feeling. You know, I don't know if you guys know that. But uh, this is what is meant by learning from others. Uh, yeah, you should learn the two you should learn the two sides to every story so as to be able to properly debate a question and hold your ground with that side that you support. If you only know one side of a story, you cannot argue intelligently nor effectively. As for instance, to combat communism, you must know about it. Otherwise, people will take advantage of you and win a victory over your ignorance. Anything that you are going to challenge, you must first know about it, so as to be able to defeat it. The moment you are ignorant about anything, the person who has the intelligence of that thing will defeat you. Therefore, get knowledge, get it quickly, get it studiously, but get it anyway. And, 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 and I'm going to help you out with that, okay? So knowledge is power. When you know a thing and can hold your ground on that thing and win over your opponent on that thing, those who hear you learn to have confidence in you. 
and will trust your ability. So we're actually gonna stop right here for a second. You know, knowledge is power. And what am I gonna bring up for you? I'm gonna bring you my rap. Why not? Uh, so we're gonna do this song. It's gonna be an ad. You know. Okay, so I know books. All right. So let me tell you about a book. All right. Check it. So the goal and objective is to be selective, elective for knowledge with the black directive, checking sources, heritage, and legacies with the brilliance to defeat our nemesis, the book of power, so aptly named, esteemed and famed for informing the brain and doing the same as the ancestors before us. Set code for after life chorus, wisdom is the key against danger, and the hinge of leaders will lead to changes. We are doing Africa with no strangers. Do you hear us? Okay, hold on. We can't continue to read the second fiddle. African power is the end of the fiddle. Let's build a nation the likes we never existed. The motto here too far, we persisted. Better, we resisted. Best, we building. We'll raise the roof and break through the ceiling. Feeling the way the change we were given to stop just surviving, start driving and living. Africa's about to host superpowers. China and US back up with time powers. No one can be free without freeing themselves. But freedom is shown and owned on bookshelves. The book of power, a key for liberation. There's no domination. Where does education? Because ignorance is man's main weakness. All of exploited the feet don't teach this. Then the pages of sages can't be quick. I can pong, delay, desolate, near they, Garvey and Zinga and Cooks. 500 pages to pass the most books. The task is told to bring up a continent. You will hold the tone for the Confident. Have some pride and push forward your chest. Your leaders by reading one of the best. The book has science covers violence, self reliance, and does away with silence. The time has come for the work to get done and build up a land that was second to none. We'll organize, technologize, strategize a new Africa before our eyes and blackness will be the complexion we see. Anytime we envision what it means to be free. So come join minds, read what is written. Here be solutions, no longer hidden. Nothing works in theory, all that works, works and works. So it's time to put ourselves first. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Book of Power. So the Book of Power can be purchased on Amazon. Just click on the link below. All right, send me a little tap. To lend my eye, to shine is fat. To lend my eye, to shine is fat. To lend my eye, to shine is fat. Oh, tap. All right. Yeah, I just had to go pay some bills. <laughs> you know how we do. All right, so never therefore attempt anything without being able to protect yourself on it. For every time you are defeated, it takes away from your prestige and you are not as respected as before. You know, so this prestige is really important. Uh, all the knowledge you want is in the world and all that you have to do is to go seeking it and never stop until you have found it. So, you know, you, the knowledge that you want, I, I already got it for you. You can find knowledge or the information about it in the public libraries if it is not on your own bookshelf. Try to have a book and own it on every bit of knowledge you want. You may generally get these books at secondhand bookstores for something, sometimes one fifth of the original value. Or you could just order it, right? <laughs> Always have a well equipped shelf of books. Nearly all information about mankind is to be found in the Encyclopedia Britannica. My, my, my objective, right? Like, real talk, my objective is that we get our own encyclopedia, you know? But this is an expensive set of books, but try to get them. Buy a complete edition for yourself and keep it at your home. And whenever you are in doubt about anything, go to it and you will find it there. Uh, the value of knowledge is to use it. It is not humanly possible that a person can retain all knowledge of the world. But if a person knows how to search for all the knowledge of the world, he will find it when he wants it. A doctor or a lawyer, although he passed his examinations in college, does not know all the laws and does not know all the techniques of medicine, but he has the fundamental knowledge. When he wants a particular kind of knowledge, he goes to the medical books or law books and refers to a particular law or how to use the recipe of medicine. You must, therefore, know where to find your facts and use them as you want them. No one will know where you get them, but you will have the facts, and by using the facts correctly, they will think you 
a one, they think you a wonderful person, a great genius, and a trusted leader. In reading, it is not necessary or compulsory that you agree with everything you read. You must always use or apply your own reasoning to what you have read based upon what you already know as touching the facts on what you have read. Pass judgment on what you read based upon those facts. When I say facts, I mean things that cannot be disputed. You may read thoughts that are old and opinions that are old and have changed since they were written. You must always search to find out the latest facts on the particular subject. And only when these facts are consistently maintained in what you read should you agree with them. Otherwise, you are entitled to your own opinion. And this, this is I mean, like I got this. Like, like, all right, on the Discord, you know, there's this brother there, and uh, I don't need to, you know, when you when you come to the Discord, you, you'll you'll see. But basically, long story short, you know, this is this is this is talking about, you know. You, you go by facts. You know, you don't go by opinions. You don't go by the opinionated. You don't go by the experts and what they say. You go by uh, what facts there are in this world, you know. And, and of course, there's always going to be latest facts. You know what I mean? There's going to be the latest facts. This It's, it's, it's like the world and, and the world of knowledge is constantly evolving, constantly changing. And, and and it's it's upon you to, to stay on top of that and eventually like I, I would say is that we we can be the frontier of knowledge you understand uh, like we could be the frontier that that's really like part of the objective so let's see always have up-to-date knowledge you can gather this from the latest books and the latest periodicals journals and newspapers read your daily newspaper every day uh, read a standard monthly journal every month, a standard weekly magazine every week, a standard quarterly magazine every quarter, and by this you'll find the new knowledge of the whole year in addition to the books you read, whose facts have not altered in that year. Don't keep old ideas, bury them as new ones come. So this is really relevant. Like 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 this is this is one of the issues with being in a colonized situation because you will see that yes, they have like white people have daily newspapers. And and standard monthly journals and weekly magazines and and standard mag like 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 they have these things and and the trouble is that they can mislead you. Th this is this is what's known as the fourth estate. Okay, this is what's known as the fourth estate. And and the trouble with the fourth the fourth estate, if you if you go by this whole estate uh, you know paradigm, it's it's to say that like like part of the ruling class. In a sense, is 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 are those who shift who who shape public opinion, you know, and and unfortunately, like like these are actually devices for propaganda, on top of, you know, on top of what Garvey is saying about you know, they report the facts, they report the latest facts. They also buried under the latest facts are propaganda, uh, buried under the latest facts are. Are, are behind the latest facts are people with 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 certain uh, certain motivate motives and motivations in a sense you know so like like I'll give you like this is the example that's fresh on my mind right which is the latest science right now is suggesting that African people actually have a, a, a good degree of Neanderthal ancestry okay uh, and 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 that's really what's going on right now you know, so if you're reading the latest journals, what you're seeing is, oh, we were mistaken. It's not that Africans don't have Neanderthal uh, genes; it's that they do. You get what I'm saying? But the the question be, then becomes, oh, uh, and then you look at the paper that you look at the paper that that came out that's now you know pushing everything, like challenging everything, right? And 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 the paper purposely, like the the researchers purposely set out to prove that. Uh, that 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 black people also have the Neanderthal gene, you know, and 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 you see what I'm saying about motive and motivation, you know. So so if you look at how the research is done, you know, usually what you do is you'd say, okay, the Yoruba, the, the pure, the, the Yoruba, the pure blood Yoruba, they are they are they are the basic template for like a, a, a African, right? Uh, and, and based off of that basic template, right, when you compare them to other people, right, and you see what's different, then you'd be like, oh, that difference is the Neanderthal, okay? Uh, 
or, or, that, or part of that difference, or, or when you look at the differences, inside of those differences, you would see the Neanderthal, right? But then they say, okay, well, instead of taking that assumption that this Yoruba doesn't have any Neanderthal gene, let's just compare their genome with the Neanderthal in a sense, uh, but in a way that, like, it's, it's an improper form, right? In the sense that you don't know what the Homo sapien is. You, you get what I'm saying? You don't know what the Homo sapien is or you don't know how much Homo sapiens and Neanderthals sh- share on a genetic level. And and more so, you don't know how much the Neanderthal would have inherited from the Homo sapien. You know? But again, this is the kind of thinking uh, that, that Garvey is talking about. Because the reality is that th- this that level of thinking that I just, you know, just brought it out, that comes from reading literature, engaging literature. It's not... But, 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 but also realizing that there's a propaganda behind uh what wazungu does you know there's a lot there's a lot when you go into if you go into it naked without understanding that wazungu has a has has a has a like wazungu are are quote unquote people right without understanding that that people have certain motivations when they're doing research uh you can you can be deceived um and, and and so like this advice right here, read the stuff like yeah, it's it's good, but this is where we have to see that this is actually this is dependence, in a sense. This is not this is not independence just yet, unless we have these daily newspapers, we have these standard monthly journals, we have these weekly magazines, and and, and because of because it's not there, this is the sort of thing that you and I and so forth should be working on. We should be saying, you know what? Let's do a, a, a quarterly magazine. You know, let's do a quarterly magazine to, to keep our people abreast on the latest uh, information, or even an annual magazine. You know, if you guys wanted me to be a part of an annual publication, you know, like I said, come to the Discord. Let's talk about it. But 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 because we're not doing that, you know, this whole idea like this is actually a, a bit something that you might want to challenge. Uh, you might want to challenge. Uh, but anyway, uh, I got like no comments in this in the in the comment section, like zero comments. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I appreciate it. All right, how to read? So use every spare minute you have in reading. If you are going on a journey that would take you an hour, carry something with you that read for that hour until you have reached the place. If you are sitting down waiting for somebody, have something in your pocket to read until the person comes. Don't waste time. Any time you think you have to waste, put it in reading something. Carry with you a small pocket dictionary and study words while waiting or traveling or a small pocket volume on some particular subject. Read through at least one book every week, separate and distinct from your newspapers and journals. It will mean that at the end of one year, you will have read 52 different subjects. After five years, you would have read over 250 books. You may be considered then a well-read man or a well-read woman, and there will be a great difference between you and the person who has not read one book, right? Uh, You will be considered intelligent, and the other person will be considered ignorant. You and the person, therefore, will be living in two different worlds, one the world of ignorance and the other the world of intelligence. Never forget that intelligence rules the world, and ignorance carries the burden. This is one of the most important quotes here, right? Never forget that intelligence rules the world and ignorance carries the burden. Therefore, remove yourself as far away from ignorance as possible and seek as much as possible to be intelligent. You know, And like I said, I make it easy for you. I wrote, I wrote some pretty intelligent books. Uh, your language being English, you should study the English language thoroughly. To know the English language thoroughly, you ought to be acquainted with Latin because most of the English words are of Latin origin. It is also advisable that you throw the French, uh, you know the French language because most of the books that you read in English carry Latin and French phrases and words. There is no use reading a page or a paragraph of a book or even a sentence without understanding it. If the paragraph has foreign words in it, go to the dictionary before you pass over the word if you don't know the meaning of the words. Never pass over a word without knowing its meaning. The dictionary and the books on world building that can be acquired from booksellers will help you greatly. Now, of course, I don't recommend, you know, French and Latin, uh, but it, it's understandable in this context. And remember that he wrote this 100 years ago. So, you know, there wasn't the Internet and all that stuff. There wasn't, you know, and there wasn't that necessarily that familiarity with these other words, you know, like this is 100 years later. It's like they, they're solidly English in a sense. Uh 
obviously but i would recommend swahili and all that other stuff but but again you know when you talk about swahili literature so even when we talk about swahili you know how many swahili books do you know of you understand or how many how many classics in swahili are there uh the, uh, or even and then and then Swahili would be one of the more publicized languages. But then you go to these other languages, and it's like, 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 what do you have? Uh, and 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 this is actually one of the the concerns that we have in, in the sense that we should actually be publishing in these other languages. Uh, like 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 we should. And it's this is a really complicated subject. Uh, it's not too complicated. Like I said, I, I write about it in the in the book but but essentially you want to create uh you want the language to be workable okay and 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 that's something that you will only do when you accomplish when when you when you build these the the, uh, an education educational facilities for for our, our people when you build educational facilities for our people then the question of what literature do we have is already solved. You know, if you if you if your school is like the lessons are in Swahili, then all the books are in Swahili. You understand? And the kids, all the kids know Swahili in order to do well in the school. You know, so so the language the language objective is is pretty simple, but it it requires you and I to get up and get active. You know, uh, get up and get active and, and that's something that we are not doing so let's say i know a boy who was ambitious to learn he didn't have the opportunity of an early school education because he had to work 10 hours a day he was determined to learn so he took to work with him every day a simplified grammar he would read and memorize passages and the rules of grammar while at work after one year he was almost an expert in the grammar of his language he knew the different parts of speech he could paraphrase analyze and construct sentences he also took with him a pocket dictionary and he could write out 25 new words with their meaning every day and he would write out 25 new words with their meanings every day and study these words and their meanings after one year he had a speaking vocabulary of more than 3,000 words he continued this for several years and when he became a man he had a vocabulary of over 15,000 words he became an author because he could write in his language because he had command of the words what he wrote was his experience and he recorded his experience in the best words of his language at the same time he was not able to write properly and so he took with him to work what is called a copying book and he practiced the copying of letters until he was able to write a very good hand he naturally became acquainted with literature and so he continued reading extensively. When he died, he was one of the greatest scholars the world ever knew. Apply the story to yourself. There is nothing in the world that you want that you cannot have so long as it is possible in nature and men have achieved it before. The greatest man and woman in the world burn the midnight lamp. That is to say, when their neighbors and households are in bed, they are reading, studying, and thinking. When they rise in the morning, they are always ahead of their neighbors and their household and the thing that they were studying, reading, and thinking of. A daily repetition of that will carry them daily ahead and above their neighbors and household. Practice this rule. It is wise to study a couple of subjects at a time, as for instance, a little geography, a little psychology, a little ethics, a little theology, a little philosophy, a little mathematics, a little science on which a sound academic education is built. By doing this week after week, month after month, year after year, you will be so learned in the liberal arts as to be ready and fit for your place in the affairs of the world. If you know what others do not know, they will want to hear you. You will then become invaluable in your community and to your country because men and women will want to hear you and see you everywhere. As stated before, books are one's best companions. Try to get them and keep them. A method of doing so is every time you have 10 cents or 25 cents or a dollar to spend foolishly either on your friends or yourself, think how much more useful if that 10 or 20 cents or dollar would be invested in a book and so invest it. Okay, so you know every time every time you're like, hey, should I get Oni's book? Uh, just put put the change. You know, every time you go to the store, put that change to the side. Put the change to the side, and then eventually you can get my book. Okay, <laughs> it may be just the thing that you have been looking for to give you a thought by which you may win the heart of the world. The ten cent, twenty five cents, or a dollar, therefore, may turn out to be an investment of worth to the extent of a million dollars. And this is this is true right here. Look, listen to this. This is true. 
when when we we talking about nation building, okay? When you have a nation, million dollars is nothing. You understand? Like 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 like, like the United States doesn't fret about a million dollars. New New York City doesn't fret about a million dollars. They don't say, "Oh, man, where did that million dollars go?" You, you understand? Like 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 when you have a nation. So when we're talking about nation building, you you putting you putting your change toward getting a book so that we can all work together on on a, on a, on, a, on a level playing field, right? This is a million dollar investment. All right. Never lend anybody the book that you want. You will never get it back. Never allow anybody to go to your bookshelf in your absence because the very book that you may want most may be taken from the shelf and you may never be able to get one of that kind again. If you have a library of your own, lock it when you are not at home. Spend most of your spare time in your library. Now, this is this is this is a this is something that's back in the day. OK, <laughs> this is on the back of the day. All right. This, uh, one of these brothers told me uh, Well, one of these elders told me. Uh, that 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 he don't even lock his car door, you know, when he got books in it, you know, like he don't even, he just leave the car door open, uh, cause you know what's what's the like who's gonna steal books, uh, so 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 you don't gotta worry about this one right here. No, I'm joking. Lock your books up. All right, spend most of your spare time in your library. If you have a radio, keep it in your own library and use it exhaustively to listen to lectures, recitals, speeches, and good music. You can learn a lot from the radio. You can be inspired a lot by good music. Good music carries a sentiment of harmony, and you may think many a good thought out of listening to good music. By the way, if you guys don't know, uh, one of the, the Pan-Africanist brothers is a musician. His name is Oth Rezor, you know, And I, I think you saw that I had an interview with him earlier so look through my youtube catalog you'll see i was you know discussing uh well we were discussing i think religion uh but but it's, it's a good brother good music check out his channel um that's it now here, here's something that's a little bit uh oh well, not a little bit but this is something i would definitely disagree with which is read a chapter of the bible every day <laughs> old and new testament so like nah pause on that but uh the greatest wisdom of the i shouldn't say pause right my bad all right. The greatest wisdom of the age is to be found in the scriptures. Just, just can I? Is there an X out? Just anyway. But 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 you know, if you go to the Meadow Nature, when when we can read the Meadow Nature, or when you can read the Meadow Nature, you can uh, you can find the greatest wisdom of the age. You know what I'm saying? Or like even that would be Patahotep. Like you could read Patahotep. Uh, that that would be the other you know great book. Or of course, if you want the greatest wisdom of our age, you know you could read you could read my book of power. You know. That also has the greatest wisdom, right? Um, so let's keep going. You can always quote from the scripture. It is the quickest way of winning approval. I got a quote book. You could quote from me. Don't don't worry about this stupid stuff. To take the take the Bible like like you could replace me. You could replace the Bible with me. I don't give a shit, you know. And some of you might be like, well, that's kind of blasphemous. No, no it's not because the Bible is written by a bunch of loser ass white dudes, uh, <laughs> like a bunch of loser ass white dudes. So so don't like I don't I don't care about loser ass white dudes. All right. So anyway, tragedy of white injustice. So the tragedy of white injustice, I actually reprinted that in the Book of Power. Oh no, it's not the Book of Power. Uh, the Pro Black Compendium. So this poem, right? It, like this secret poem. This hush, hush, shh, 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 here's a poem. You know, this one is. Uh, I, I put it in the Pro Black Compendium. So you're welcome. All right. So read and study thoroughly the poem "Tragedy of White Injustice" and apply its sentiment and statements in connection with the historic character and behavior of the white man. Know it so well as always to be able to be on guard against any professions of the white man in his suggested friendship for the Negro. The poem exposes the white man's behavior in history and is intended to suggest distrust of him in every phase of life. Never allow it to get into the hands of the white man if possible. So, like, I kind of went against that right here. So it's never allowed to get in the, Like, technically a white boy could just pick up my book and he's like, oh, well, I got the great poem. But, you know, the thing is that the poem is already out in circulation. Even this book right here, Message to the People, was kind of a don't let the white man get it. But, you know, it's kind of too late. The white man is publishing it right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh... And the thing is that, like, when you try not to get other people to get it, like, sometimes our people don't get it. So, like, chances are you probably haven't read the, the Tragedy of White Injustice unless you read the Pro Black Compendium, you know? Or chances are you don't know about Message to the People unless, like, you're listening right now. You get what I'm saying? Uh, so, there's a lot. There's a lot. It's sometimes you have to, like, you have to do, like, a calculus. You know, it's like, should we, should I not tell you about the freaking greatest book on the world, you know? 
Oh, one of the greatest books in the world? All right, anyway. You can improve your language, uh, your, you can improve your English as you go along by reading critically the books of the language. That is to say, you must pay close attention to the construction of sentences and paragraphs as you see them in the books you read. Imitate the style. Read with observation, never read carelessly and recklessly. In reading books written by white authors of whatsoever kind, be aware of the fact that they are not written for your particular benefit or for the benefit of your race. Like, dude. Like, this this right here, man. Look at this. In reading books written by white authors of whatsoever kind, be aware of the fact that they are not written for your particular benefit or for the benefit of your race. They always write from their own point of view and only in the interest of their own race. Never swallow wholly what the white man writes or say without first critically analyzing it and investigating it. The white man's trick is to deceive other people for his own benefit and profit. Always be on your guard against him and whatsoever he says, he does or says. Never take chances with him. His school books in the elementary and high schools, colleges and universities are all fixed up to suit his own purposes, to put him on top and to keep him on top of other people. Don't trust him. Beware beware like yo this is garvey like this is why garvey i say is the most intelligent person human being uh the most intelligent human being of the 20th century okay like 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 this, this like nothing compares right here no, nothing like uh like oh my gosh all right you should study carefully the subject of ethnology it is a subject that causes races to know the difference between one race and another. Ethnic relationships are important for they reveal the characteristic of one race, people, as different from another. There is no doubt that each race has different habits and manners of behavior. You must know them so as to be able to deal with them. There are books on this subject in the library. In your reading and searching for truth, always try to get that which is particularly helpful to the Negro. Every thought that strikes you, see how it fits in with the Negro and to what extent you can use it to his benefit or in his behalf. Your entire obsession must be to see things from the Negro's point of view, remembering always that you are a Negro striving for Negro supremacy in every department of life so that any truth you see or any fact you gather must be twisted to suit the Negro psychology of things. The educational system of today hides the truth as far as a Negro is concerned. Therefore, you must searchingly scan everything you read, particularly history, to see what you can pick out for the good of the race. For instance, you will read that the Egyptians were a great people, the Carthaginians, Libyans, etc., but you will not be told that they were black people or Negroes. Therefore, you should go beyond the mere statement of these events to discover the truth that will be creditable to your race. Therefore, in a case like that, you would ask, where did the Libyans Carthaginians or Egyptians get their civilization from. You see, like this is this is like you know some people are like a, well some people would say that's a whole tap thing. No stupid. Uh, well that's if you're saying that the whole tap thing, and I shouldn't even say you're stupid. But but like for real though, like no. And sorry, I'm live, so I would have otherwise I would have edited it out. <laughs> but no, but for real though, it's like no. What you're not getting is that even a hundred years ago. People knew that the Egyptians, Carthaginians, and, and Libyans, like these great people, were black. And they're t even a hundred years later, they're still lying and telling you otherwise. And it's like, no, it's not no whole temp nonsense. It's, it's like, you're being lied to. For the purpose of, 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 as Garvey said, you know, keeping... For whites putting themselves on top and keeping himself on top. And he's supposed to. He's supposed to. Come on. All right. Following that kind of investigation, you will come upon the truth that it was all original Negro and subsequently became Negroid. That is to say, subsequent people were mixed with other people's blood who were no doubt conquered by the Negro. Uh, as a fact, the original Egyptians were black men and women, and so the Carthaginians and Libyans, but in the later centuries they became mixed in blood, just as the blacks are being mixed in America and the West Indies by the infusion of white blood through the domination of the white man. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like, <sighs> come on. I mean, if I wasn't, you know, if I wasn't on my own data right now, I'd be, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I had unlimited internet, I'd, I'd give a good pause, but I, I, got, I, I, got, I don't got unlimited internet. All right, so, uh, never yield to any statement in history or a statement made by any individual, 
caring not how great that the Negro was nobody in history. Even if you cannot prove it, always claim that the Negro was great. Read everything you can get written by Negroes. Look at that, man. Read everything you can get by Negroes. Uh, you can call me a Negro if you want. All right. <laughs> and their ancestry. Going back 6,000 years. There are statements in the Bible and the Old and New Testament to show that black was always an important color among the races of man. Abraham had company with a black woman, even though he had his wife, Sarah, by whom he had Ishmael. All the original pharaohs were black. Tutan, uh, Tutankhamen. So you see, that's right there. Amon. That's the... Uh, that's, that's our... Uh, that's our nature, our natural, right? But Tut Ankh Amon, right? Uh, whose bones and bodies were dug up not very long ago at Luxor in Egypt was a black pharaoh. The Sphinx in Egypt, which has stood through the millennium, has black features. It is evident that as art, it was portrayed to teach us the greatness of men. When you are dealing with Jews, let them know that they were once your slaves in Egypt, if you have to say so. There is good grounds for saying that civilization started in Africa and passed from and through northern Africa into southern Europe, from which the Greeks and Romans and the people of Asia Minor made good copies. The swarthy color of the Asiatics and the brunette color of the southern Europeans are due to the fact that the culture and civilized blacks of Africa mix their blood with them. Search all history and all literature and the Bible and find facts to support this argument and hold it with a grip that will never loosen. Things that may not be true can be made so if you repeat them long and often enough. Therefore, always repeat statements that will give your race status and advantage. That is how the white man has built up his system of superiority. So this is this right here, I don't necessarily agree with. I mean, I understand it. But, but the thing is that what we're saying is true. So it's not really... Uh, a case of like repeating something that's not true, uh, you know, and hoping to convince other people. It's really repeating the truth. Um, but I mean, of course, that might just be me being a symptom. I mean, being a victim of uh, <laughs> of this kind of propaganda. But no, I doubt it. Because, like I said, I, I read stuff. Uh, <laughs> anyway, therefore, always repeat statements that will give you a race status as an advantage. That is how the white man has built up his system of superiority. He is always telling you he is superior, and he has written history and literature to prove it. You must do the same. One of the great backgrounds for your argument, which cannot be disputed, is that you are older than any other man as a race because you are black. Your argument is that in nature, everything by way of age darkens. Uh, yeah, this was a little bit of a weird argument right here. All right, he says, your argument is that in nature, everything by way of age darkens. Because you are darker than the rest of men proves logically that you are older than the rest of men. All right, so this one right here doesn't make sense, okay? But, you know, and this one also doesn't make sense. Another proof of that is that even among white people, they grow darker in skin as they grow older in age in a lifetime, right? So, again, that's not, like, because this would then mean that, you know, like, this wouldn't, this wouldn't make sense. Uh... I mean, it, it, but also, I'm not saying it wouldn't make sense, uh, but it's interesting because the, here's the thing that I want to actually interject and, and give to you guys, and you can actually mull over it or even reply in the comments about it, right? But, and in fact, if you want, let's see, how, how long am I in this? Um, you can say this is the 50-minute question, right? You know, hey, only I got an answer for the 50-minute question. Uh, and let me just see if there's any, uh, let's see if there's any comments. Nope. Uh, I don't have any viewers. That's interesting. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so uh, let's go back to this thing. Um, like, assuming, like, if you go by the evolutionary model, if you will, right, the apes, the apes that were technically supposed to be allegedly related to do not have dark skin. You understand? So, So the suggestion there then would be why don't they have dark skin? Now, part of it, obviously, one of the easy things to, to say is, well, you know, a lot of a large part of the reason why we have dark skin is because with less hair on our body, our skin has to, like our epidermis, if you will, has to uh, facilitate, like, has to resist that 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 the solar, uh, you know, the solar contribution, if you will, like the heat, you know, like like you want to reflect light uh, in order to as a cooling mechanism uh and we don't have hair on our body so we don't necessarily have dark hair to uh reflect that light we, we would have to use uh you know the skin of our body but then that would then suggest that you know 
dark skin is a, a selective is like a selected trait you know like a client if you will um uh, and that would actually uh reason that you know before you know homo sapien if you will you know that there could have been uh like a lighter uh complexion in a sense uh but but again you know who knows also <laughs> interesting thing is that infants or, or babies toddlers a lot of times not all the time but a lot of times they're they they get darker with age uh but it's it, there's a lot going on here i wouldn't necessarily use this line of argumentation only because of of the more advanced science uh of, of our time but it's also something to explore you know as we ourselves develop our own scientists you know but let's continue with this chapter. All right. If one individual were to live for 6,000 years, he would surely not be white. If he were born white, he would be as dark as the darkest of men. So I don't know about that, right? Uh, but of course, nobody knows because 6,000 years is a long time to live as an individual. A very long time. <laughs> uh, I mean, like that's like longer than turtles, right? All right. Uh, it's like, 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 a, like a tree, you know? <laughs> anyway. Therefore, the argument that the black man is black because as man, he's older than the other man is good. Use it everywhere you go to defeat the white man and his belief that you sprung from something else. Use the argument that the white man is white because most of the time, when the black man was great in Africa and I succeeded in running him across the Mediterranean into southern Europe, he had to hide himself in caves where there was very little light and air. Now, this is true right here. He was almost covered up for most of the time in darkness. In natural creation, the child in the womb of the mother is almost white. So he's talking about, this is what I was saying before too. Even though it is a black child, it is almost born white and doesn't change cool color until it comes in contact with light and air uh, living in caves for as many centuries the white man therefore became colorless and the length of time made it so that he was born naturally white you must interpret anthropology to suit yourself the thing for you to do is to refute every pertinent statement of the white man that tends to degrade you and to elevate him Turn the tables on him and search for all reason in the world you can find to justify it. That is how new thoughts are given out by creation. Never yield to the statement of your inferiority. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just make sure I'm online, right? Yeah, I'm online and nobody is on the thing. No, all right, let me, let me stop. <laughs> all right, let's keep reading. Uh, in reading Christian literature and accepting the doctrine of Jesus Christ, uh, yeah, this is what I'm talking Like, what? Nah. Like, this is what I mean. Just, just click, exit out. Well, let's keep reading. In reading Christian literature and accepting the doctrine of Jesus Christ, or JC, <laughs> uh, lay special claim to your association with Jesus and the Son of God. Oh, my gosh. Show, the while, show that while the white and yellow worlds, that is to say, the worlds of Europe and Asia Minor, uh, persecuted and crucified Jesus, the Son of God, it was the black race through Simon, the black Cyrenian, Cyrenian who befriended the Son of God, and took up the cross and bore it alongside him, him, alongside of him, up to the heights of Calvary. Therefore, the Roman Catholics have no rightful claim to the cross, nor any other professing Christian. Before the Negro makes his claim, the cross is the property of the Negro and his religion because it was he who bore it. Right. So anyway, this is like, ugh, I don't really care. Anyway, so never admit that Jesus Christ was a white man; otherwise, he could not be the Son of God and the God to redeem all mankind. Jesus Christ had the blood of all races in his veins, and tracing the Jewish race back to Abraham and to Moses and from which Jesus sprang through the line of Jesse, you'll find Negro blood everywhere. Therefore, Jesse had mostly Negro blood in him. Again, I don't even, I don't even care for this. Although I think this Jesse right here is supposed to be Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah right here. See. Therefore, Jesus, yeah. Had most, yeah, but it's like, I don't, I don't care. Like, like, cause the, the thing is that Jesus thing is a myth. I don't know if you guys know that. There's another book, like I linked it inside of the uh, Pro Black Compendium, but there's another book uh, written by his brother Adri Rafo, and he kind of goes through, I think it's Cuckoo, Cuckoo Tuntum, right? Uh, Cuckoo Tuntum, he talks about, uh, like, like what Jesus and Moses really mean, you know? Like, these are, these are, these are symbol, these are symbolic words. It's not, these are not real people as much as they are, uh, like, like, like they're phrases from ancient Kemet, uh, or like ideas from ancient Kemet that, that, like, repeated, or personified, you know, personified ideas. Like, 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 for instance, I think Muhammad was like Muhap, you know, Hap being the Nile, uh, and like Mu being something in particular. I don't remember, but like, it's, it's more like, like, like they're just personifications. Like, 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 it's just, it's all analogy, allegory. Anyway, let's keep reading though. All right, read the genealogical tree of Jesus in the Bible, and you will learn 
from whom he sprang. It is a fact that the white man has borrowed a civilization from other people. The first civilization was the Negroes, black people. The second civilization was the brown peoples, Indians. And the third civilization belonged to yellow people, the Chinese or Mongols. The last civilization up to the present belongs to the white man. All civilization goes back to the black man in the Nile Valley of Africa. Therefore, in your reading, search for all these facts. Never stop reading and never stop until you find the proof of them. So this is actually a pretty interesting question because when you analyze these first three, actually the first four of civilizations, it all ties back to, like, like, like he says, it all ties back to the Nile Valley. All, all of it ties back to the Nile Valley. Or even before the Nile Valley, the Green Sahara. So everything kind of ties back to the Green Sahara. Um, but 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 that's something that like you you pick up the PBZ and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, you must pay great attention to sociology. Get the best books on the subject that you can read and read them thoroughly. That you can and read them thoroughly. Find out the social relationship among other races so that you may know how to advise your people in their social behavior. Never admit that the Negro is more immoral than the white man. Try to prove the contrary. Uh, socially, the white man has debauched and debased all of the races because of his dominant power. He is responsible for more legitimacy among the races than any other race. He has left bastard children everywhere he has been. Therefore, he is not competent to say that he is socially and morally purer than any other race. The mixed population among Negroes from slavery to the present in certain countries is due to the white man's immorality. Therefore, if you should hear anyone talk about moral depravity among Negroes and the moral excellence of the whites, draw the above facts to their attention. When when through reading and research you have discovered any new fact helpful to the dignity, prestige, character, and accomplishment of the Negro, always make a noise about it. You should always keep with you a notebook and a fountain pen or indelible pencil and make a note in the book of anything you hear or see that you would like to remember. Always keep at home a larger notebook in which you may transfer the thoughts of your experience so that it will not be lost to your memory. At least once every three months, read over the book, and as the book becomes more voluminous with facts, read it over at least once a year. By constantly reading these facts, they will be planted in your subconscious mind, and you will be able to use them without even knowing that you are doing so. By keeping your facts and your very important experience on record, at the end of a full life, you may have a volume of great value, such as Eber, Albert Hubbard's scrapbook. See, I actually never read that. So get a copy of this book. It contains valuable inspiration. Always have a thought. Always make it a beautiful thought. The world is attracted to beauty, either in art or in expression. Therefore, try to read, think, and speak of beautiful things. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. Oh, I think this is like a white boy's... That's Evictus, yeah. Ugh. Anyway, I was, I was all going to read it like it was Garvey, but never mind. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeoning of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menacing of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Okay, and that was obviously Invictus, W. E. Henley. I think I can't remember, but I think Mandela. I think it's like one of Mandela's favorite poems. Uh, it makes a lot of sense, right? But I mean, apparently Marcus Garvey liked it too, so you know, shit. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for listening. Uh, you know, next time try to come through, read with me. Uh, definitely come through and uh, you know, you know, share 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 the voice. Uh, with me. I'm wondering if this is even live. I mean, I wonder if this is even public, but you know, we'll we'll see. But thank you so much for listening. And it's Shemi Motep. And this is, of course, like I said, come to the Discord. You can get that book. Uh, easy. Alright. Motep. <laughs>